University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. The second round of this series competition begins tonight. At the time of filming, COVID-19 remains in circulation and so our protective measures remain in place. We've also relaxed some of our rules about the use of reserve players. There, however, our generosity ends. In this round, there are no safety nets or second chances. Winners progress and losers go home. Now, the team from St Andrews University took an early lead against Gonville and Keys College, Cambridge, and just about held on to it until the gong, finishing with 140 points to their opponent's 120. Classical music and world geography were particular strengths, but photography and Pico Farads caused them rather more frustration. They're playing their reserve tonight, with Mr Gibbons unavailable through illness. So with an average age of 24, let's meet the St Andrews team for the second time. Good evening, I'm Alec Chukai, I'm from Wokingham in Berkshire, and I'm studying astronomy and astrophysics. Hi there, I'm Sam Higford, I'm from Rochdale, and I'm studying English. And their captain? Hello, I'm Joseph Cryan, I'm from the Loon Valley in North Lancashire, and I'm a second year studying history. Hello, my name is Sofia Inesimova, I'm from Moscow, Russia, and I'm studying for PhD in history. Now, in their first round match, the team from Royal Holloway faced spirited opposition from Cranfield University. They were beaten to the buzzer on pop art and the Frankfurt School, but impressive knowledge of physics, chemistry and international television saw them ahead at the gong by 155 points to 110. Representing around 11,500 students with an average age of 34, let's meet the Royal Holloway team again. Uh, hello, I'm Joel Abramovich. I'm originally from Highgate, North London, and I'm doing a BSc in biology. Hello, I'm Joanna Brown. I'm also from North London, and I'm studying for a PhD in creative writing. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm George Harvey. I'm from Dunmo in Essex, and I'm studying for a master's in physics. Hi, I'm Mika Clayton. I'm from South Africa, but I live in Richmond, and I'm doing a PhD in music and neuropsychology. OK, you all know the rules by now, so fingers on buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. I need a single short word here. According to Alan Bennett, what begins with imitation, often in the form of parody? Auden said it was born of humiliation, while Herbert Reed said it was pattern informed by sensibility. Nabokov calls it beauty plus pity, and Oscar Wilde just said it is all immoral. St Andrew's Higfat. Satire? No. Royal Holloway Brown. Art? Art is correct, yes. Right, you get bonuses on adaptations of Jane Austen's Emma. Which US actress played the title role in the 1996 film adaptation of Emma? She also played Estella in Alfonso Cuaron's 1998 film of an updated version of Great Expectations. I think it's Gwyneth Paltrow. And that's 1996 adaptation. Emma, yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow. Correct. The BBC's 2009 mini-series of Emma saw which British actor in its lead role? She was one of three who played the part of Bryony Tallis in the 2007 film Atonement. Um, I think it's Romola Garai. Was she in Atonement? I, 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 I don't know. know. I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I, 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 I think I'll nominate you. OK. Nominate Brown. Romola Garai. Correct. The 2020 film adaptation directed by Autumn de Wilde starred which actor as Emma? In 2021, she won a Golden Glow for her role as the chess prodigy Beth Harmon in the Netflix series The Queen's Gambit. Anya Taylor-Joy. Yeah. Anya, Anya Taylor-Joy. Anya. Anya Taylor-Joy. Anya Taylor-Joy. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> what word can be used for the calyx of a soft fruit or the outer covering of a seed, the main frame of a ship and a city in the east riding of Yorkshire? Royal Holloway Brown. Hull. Hull is correct. Your bonuses are on railway junctions, as shown on the National Rail Map of the British Rail Network. Identify the station described in each case. A station lying both on the line running east-west between Chester and Stoke-on-Trent and the West Coast main line between Warrington and Stafford. Anyone know the area? I mean, we just went through Stoke-on-Trent. That's what I was thinking, saying, but yeah. that's all I know. St um, Stockport... 
like Macclesfield or Stockport yeah. or something. Is it maybe two oh. different places with the same name or the same place? Um, yeah, just, I think it's two different ones, but I don't know. Should, should we yeah. just say, what should we say? Macclesfield. 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 No, it's Crewe. Yeah. The City Who station lies both on the line running south from Inverness and the line between Stirling and Dundee, east of Dunblane. So it's the city. Um, Aberdeen, something like that. Inverness is up, yeah. quite far up north. I know Dundee. It's running south there. Aberdeen is the only thing that came into my head. Okay. okay. Go for it. Anyone? Go, go, go for it. I can't okay. visualise very Aberdeen. Well. Aberdeen is east of Inverness. It's Perth. A station that lies on the East Coast main line between Huntingdon and Grantham and that between Stamford and March. So that's sort of Cambridgeshire, Huntingdonshire, Grant Lincolnshire, Grantham. So like Peterborough, that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, perhaps, yeah. That's in the area. Should we go for that then? Yeah. Peterborough? Peterborough is right. Well done. <laughs> Under certain conditions of tyranny, it is far easier to act than to think. These words are attributed to which German-born political philosopher, the author of The Human Condition and the Origins of Totalitarianism? St Andrews and Isamuva. Hannah Arendt. Hannah Arendt is correct. <laughs> right, St Andrews, you get your first set of bonuses. There are scientists who give their names to research institutes in Germany. In each case, give the name from the description. Named after the discoverer of the tuberculosis and cholera bacteria, which German federal government agency is responsible for disease control and prevention? This is the Robert Koch Institute, oh, yeah. yeah. Robert Koch Institute. Correct. An applied research institute, secondly, spread over many sites. It is named after the 19th century scientist who gives his name to dark lines of the sun's spectrum. It's the Max Planck? <sighs> Max Planck is a good chat. There is a Planck Institute, certainly. Uh, there is a Max. Dark. I don't think is it's Is it the 19th but... century? Um... Oh. I ah, I don't, no, I don't think... I, we got go for it, I don't yeah. go for it. Max Planck Institute? No, it's the Fraunhofer Institutes. Never heard of him. No. Named after the... Don't be proud of your ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> Named after the originator of quantum theory, a group of institutes conducting research in the sciences, social sciences and the humanities. Do we think this, perhaps, is the I Max Planck Institute? I think that might be, yeah. Quantum... Mm. Max really Planck quantum... Yeah, is no, 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 he is quantum. Maybe. Yes, of course, yeah, yeah, of course. Max Planck Institute. It is Max Planck yeah. Institute. Well done. If you want to take a picture around now, for your picture starter, you'll see a ray diagram showing the path of light through a type of telescope. For ten points, give the name commonly used for this type of telescope. St Andrew's Chukai. I think that's a Cassegrain Schmidt. No. Uh, Royal Holloway Harvey. A uh, reflector. No, that's not specific enough. It is a reflector telescope. But that's a very broad category. I need to hear Newtonian reflector. So we're going to take the picture bonuses in a moment or two. Ten points for this. Give any one of the three seven-letter anagrams that mean relating to sight, local or of the moment, and the seat of US Congress in Washington. St Andrews Hickford. Cap capital. Capital is correct. Optical and topical are the other ones. Right, you saw a diagram for the picture starter of a Newtonian telescope named after Isaac Newton, who first constructed one in 1668. Your picture bonus is of three more diagrams showing telescope optical paths. For five points each, give the names commonly used for these telescope designs. All are named after scientists associated with their early construction. Firstly? It looks like a, a big one. It's got double things. Go, go for reflecting. Galilean. Yeah. Um, a Galilean telescope. <laughs> now, that's a cast grain. Oh. Secondly? Oh, it's got film in it. So uh, <laughs> it's got to be a bit newer. Uh, no, I don't, oh, I don't think I'm going to no. get it. Um, uh, he's not in the 20th century. Uh, Kepler. <laughs> no. Schmidt. Oh. And finally... This could be a Galilean. I was going to say, this looks very simple. Go with Galilean. A Galilean telescope. Galilean is correct. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. <laughs> Neglecting the tolerance band, the three stripes on a standard four-band resistor with value 9.5 kilo ohms form the horizontal trickler of what European country? Uh, Royal Holloway Harvey. Germany. No. St Andrews Tukai. Bulgaria. Bulgaria is correct, yes. Um, right. 
You get three questions on the 19th century translator Lady Charlotte Guest. Born in 1812, Guest is best known for her English translation of which medieval Welsh prose collection of tales, myths and folklore? Is this going to be the matter of Britain? Is it, is it the... Yeah, it's, it's pro, prose, so is, is it Geoffrey of... Monmouth. Monmouth. Is it Geoffrey of Monmouth? But what's his work called? Um, Dungany. <laughs> <laughs> go, go for the one that you know, if you know the, the title. Do you think the matter... Is the matter of Britain a work? Um, is that Geoffrey of Monmouth? I, I thought, just I thought, just go, go for that. Yeah, um, we're not 100% yeah, sure. We're, we're, we're OK, the matter story. of Britain. No, it's the Mabinogian. Ah, OK. In that. 1833, Charlotte married John Josiah Guest, owner of the Dowlais Iron Company. After his death, she took over the running of his large works in which town, roughly midway between Cardiff and Brecon? Towns in uh, in, in Wales. Um, um, I mean, it's going to be south. It's Swansea, is that, is that Bury, maybe Aberystwyth. No, uh, no. Aberystwyth. Aberystwyth maybe way it's too, 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 um, too north. Um, it's a, it's near Cardiff because Bury. Yeah, what, what did you say? Sorry, no, sorry. I said Neath, but Neath is could near it, Swansea. Be between Cardiff, um, Swan, Swansea. Come on, no, it's not. I don't know where. Bury. Okay. Bury. Yeah. Okay, uh, Bury. Bury is in Lancashire. You were thinking of Bury, I think, aren't you? Yes. Yes, it was, in fact, Merthyr Tydfil. Which poet praised Guest's English as the finest he knew and based part of his Idylls of the King oh, on one of the tales in her translated collection? Is that Tennyson? Tennyson. Tennyson is right. Ten points for this. <laughs> Meaning an adult wild hawk caught for training, what word is used as an insult in Shakespeare? As an adjective, it describes a tired and drawn appearance, for example... That of the Knight at Arms in Keats's La Belle Dame Sans Merci. St Andrews, Hickford. Haggard. Haggard is correct. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on a small number of European countries whose names in English have a different initial letter to their names in Spanish. In each case, name the country from three of its towns or cities. Firstly, Maribor, Copa and Cellier. This is three countries. Three, three cities three, three. in the country. The country has got a different initial letter in English and Spanish. Um, so, Mar Maribol, is that? Uh, is I that think perhaps? it's Marienbad, and it will be something like Germany and the word Alemania in Spanish. Yeah. Um, is it? But it's something French is there. Mar as well. Mar I didn't recognise any of those. It sounded German romance. Things. It sounded like a romance language. I would say. Perhaps but... do we want to say Romania then? Say Romania. Mar yeah. No. Yeah. Come on. Um, Just uh, I've, go I've got nothing. Um, okay. Romania. It's Slovenia. Oh, okay. Secondly, Poprad, Presho, and Nitra. Um, that's Slovakia, Presho. I believe. That is Slovakia. Presho. Principality of Nitra yeah. in the Yeah, Nitra. Slovakia. Slovakia. Slovakia is correct. And finally, Emin, Assen, and Middleburg. That's Germany. Shall that's we? Germany. Yeah, that's Germany. Essen. Essen. No, you say Essen. Yeah, that's Germany. Germany. No, it's the Netherlands. Oh. Ten points for this. In the words of the OED, to do or perform something impressively or conclusively is a recently added definition of what short verb. It can also mean to fail financially, to shatter violently, and in tennis, to make a... Royal Holloway Brown. Smash. Smash is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on mathematics. Also known for his work in topology, which German mathematician gives his name to a transformation that maps a complex number Z to AZ plus B divided by CZ plus D, where A, B, C and D are also all complex numbers. Um, is that Euler? Well, <laughs> Euler did most things in maths. Um, I was thinking Hilbert, but I don't think he's German. Um, I was just thinking in terms of topology as well. Topology, yeah. Weird. Hilbert was curves, I know that. Come o on. Euler. Should we go for it? Euler. No, it's Mobius. <laughs> Studied by Mobius, transformations under which parallel lines remain parallel and ratios of distances along lines are preserved are known by what name? Covariant, I would guess, if they vary. I don't, nothing's I don't know. jumping to mind. <laughs> Covariant? It's affinity or affine transformations. Mobius is perhaps best known for his description of the geometrical construct, the Mobius strip. How many sides and how many edges does the Mobius strip have? Well, it's got one it's side and one, one edge. Yeah, because yeah. it's, one yeah, it's a yeah. one side, one edge. It has, yes. 
We're going to take a music round now. For your music starter, you're going to hear a piece of jazz. I want you to identify the person who's both the composer and the band leader. St Andrews and Isimova. Duke Ellington. No. Royal Holloway Brown. Herbie Hancock. Herbie Hancock is correct, yes. <laughs> so your music starter was an excerpt there from Herbie Hancock's Watermelon Man on his 1962 album, Taking Off, the engineer of which was the prolific and influential Rudy Van Gelder, who's been called the greatest recording engineer in jazz history. For your bonuses, you'll hear excerpts from three more albums that Van Gelder worked on. First, the composer of this piece, here on the bass clarinet. <laughs> Let me find this like the big bass clarinet. Okay. Fundy. I don't know is anyone a, else who does jazz on the bass it? clarinet. No, because he's a bass, double bass. I see. Yeah. yeah. On bass clarinet. I don't know if it's right, but Courtney Pine's yeah. the only bass clarinet. So what are we saying? Yeah. Courtney Pine, say. So. Courtney. Courtney Pine. I'll nominate you. Nominate Clayton. Courtney Pine. No, it was Eric Dolphy. It was out to lunch. Secondly, I want the composer and band leader of this piece here on tenor saxophone. I think this is Oliver Nelson, Stolen Moments. O Oliver Nelson? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Oliver Nelson? It is Oliver Nelson. That was Blues and the Abstract Truth. I want either the band leader or the group performing here, please. So what? Miles Davis. Miles Davis. Is it So What by Miles Davis? Yeah. Which one are you more confident on? Are you Miles Davis. Miles Davis. Miles Davis. Miles Davis. Because we, yeah. we can do either of them. No, go Miles Davis. Okay. Miles Davis. It was Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers exactly. on Moaning. Ten points for this. Answer as soon as your name is called. What number is produced when the fraction 5 6 is multiplied by its reciprocal? St Andrew's Chukai. One. One is correct. Yes, of course. OK, here are your bonuses. They're on glacial landforms, an example being the cheese press stone in the Yorkshire <laughs> Dales. What term denotes a glacially <laughs> transported rock that differs from the geology in which it's found? An alien? I don't yes, know. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. We it's a guess. An alien. No, it's an erratic. <laughs> of Irish origin, what term denotes a long, low hill shaped by a glacier? <laughs> These hills often occur together in a basket of eggs topography. Um, GCSE <laughs> geography should have come in here. No. Um, <laughs> is this a barrow? Go for it. I, I don't idea. know. <laughs> a barrow. No, it's a drumlin. Consisting of debris deposited by glaciers or ice sheets, what landform has types that include terminal, lateral and recessional? This is a moraine. It is a moraine, yes. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. What three-letter abbreviation links all of these? A major work by Immanuel Kant, published in 1781, the railway that reached Vancouver in 1885, and an emergency... St Andrew's Crying. CPR? CPR is correct. Well, yeah. <laughs> right, these bonuses are on galactic empires. Name the author who created each of the following. Firstly, the Imperial Raj, R-A-D-C-H, it first appears in the 2013 novel Ancillary Justice, whose title refers to a form of military AI housed in a starship and networked with thousands of enslaved bodies. Um, um, so it's, it's a woman. Modern. It's oh, a, a woman. woman. Oh, is it? It's not Margaret Atwood, is it? Do no. Dor Doris Lessing, she writes science fiction. No, she was dead no. by then. I've been, remi I've been reminded to read this book a million times. Um, Sorry. I can't. Um, not happening. It's a woman. We've got nothing. Any good not guesses? No, no idea. In that case, we're going to say Dave Garder. No, it was Anne Leckie. Second, the instrumentality of mankind. In the 1963 story Drunk Boat, its slogan begins, watch, but do not govern, stop war, but do not wage it. It could be, could be Hux Huxley. Mm, I no. would say yeah, that yeah, era. Huxley. I would say Philip K. Dick, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah Philip, I, Philip, K., Philip K. Dick is a good, is that's, that's a good show. I, I don't recognise it, he, he was, so he, I think it might be Dick. Dick yeah, was waiting in six. We good? Yeah. Philip K. Dick. It's Cord Wayner Smith. Oh, no. yeah. Unfortunately, never heard of The Ecumen, finally, that's a largely a peaceful confederation that uses an instant communication device called an Ansible. It was introduced in the 1966 novel Rokenna's World. It's Ursula Le Guin. 
Um, it's absolutely Ursula Le Guin. Ursula Le Guin. Well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. George Brack's glass and playing cards and Pablo Picasso's still life with chair caning are among the early Cubist works to use what artistic technique, whose name comes from the French for to stick or glue? Royal Holloway Brown. Collage? Collage is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on opera. In each case, identify the title figure who forms a love or desire triangle with the characters named. Premiered in Paris in 1867 and based on a dramatic work by Schiller, Elizabeth of Valois, Philip II of Spain, and which title character? 1867 in Paris. Who's that guy? Um, no. Work by Schiller. Philip II. She, Philip II was she, Mary, Mary of first of England. I'm just thinking historically, I'm not yeah, thinking yeah. opera. Oh, that should help. It's a title um, character. It's a title character. Um, Come on, let's have it, please. Uh, Mary, Queen of England, I guess. I, let's go. Mary, Queen of England. No, it's Don Carlos. I could hear Miss Anisimova saying it over there. In a work first performed in 1879, Tatiana, Prince Gremin, and which title character? Tatiana is... Um... Is it a Russian name, I think? Um... Oh, the problem is not, not Italian. It's um... not much caveat. Pass. Yeah, Turn it's... Dot. Pass. It's Eugene Onegin. Onegin. First performed in Rome in 1900, Mario, a painter, Scarpia, the chief of police, and which title character? Scarpia. Scarpia, yeah. I know. But it's Italian. Um, so it's Italian 1900. Tosca Don Giovanni, but it's. Don Giovanni. No, it's Tosca. Right, we're going to take another picture round now. For your picture starter, you'll see a photograph of a writer. Ten points if you can give me their name. Royal Holloway Brown. Susan Sontag? It is Susan Sontag, yes. <laughs> Her essay collection on photography explored the nature of image creation through examples in various media. You'll see three works discussed in Sontag's collection for five points apiece. Firstly... Please name the photographer who took this image. I can't remember whether it's Eve or no, or Margaret someone. I know the photo. Do you know that? Well, no. I can't. Yeah. Dorothy. Dorothy Lang. Dorothy Lang. Dor Dorothy Lang. Dorothy Lang. Dorothy Lang is correct. Secondly, the artist who created this print. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, I've is got. Is it someone like Man Ray? Could be. I mean, I'm not thinking of anything. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it Man doesn't. Ray? It doesn't ring a bell for me at all. It's for men. Man Ray. No, it's Lashlo Mohoy Nodge. Finally, the title of this film. Oh, it's that horrible one. Oh, Peeping Tom. Peeping Tom? Peeping Tom is correct. You take the lead. A starter question now. A single word answer is enough here. In a picture in London's National Gallery, reassembled from four cut up panels, who is the subject of a work by Edward Manet that depicts his execution in 1867 by a firing. Royal Holloway Harvey. Maximilian. Maximilian is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on an astronomical term. Also known as ellipticity or flattening, what parameter specifies the degree to which a planet's shape differs from a true sphere, largely as a result of rotation? <sighs> so it's... it's... It's, it's like oblateness. Yeah. I, I think, because an oblate spheroid is a sphere that's squished. Okay. So ob Go ablateness. For it. A blatantness? A blatantness is correct. A planet's oblateness is found by subtracting its polar diameter from its equatorial diameter, then dividing by which diameter? It's going to be me, like mean, like mean diameter. Okay. okay. Mean diameter? No, it's its equatorial diameter. With an oblateness of 0 0.098, what is the most oblate planet in the solar system? Uh, um, Neptune, isn't it? I, th I thought it was going to be Jupiter, because it spins at 10 hours a day. Oh, like, OK, fine. Per, I, I th that would be my guess. No, 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 you, I think... Go for it. Okay, I'm going to feel really bad if it's Neptune. Don't. Jupiter? It's Saturn. <laughs> Ten points for this. Quote, that day we were like one of his troubled pairs, speechless, until he spoke for them. These lines of Seamus Heaney concern which literary figure the subject of Heaney's poem that recalls visiting higher Bockhampton near Dorchester. St Andrews Hickford. Uh, is it Ted Hughes? No, it's not. 
Royal Holloway Brown. Thomas Hardy? Thomas Hardy is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on banknotes. For several decades, the Baroque-era poet and philosopher, Sister Juana Inés de la Cruz, appeared on the banknotes of which Latin American country? De la Cruz. It sounds more Columbia. South America. Yeah. Um, well, it could be any of the Spanish ones, I suppose, or possibly yeah. Portuguese. If I, I'd go Argentina or Chile, actually. Yeah, Argentina would be a guess. Oh. Argentina? No, it's Mexico. Oh. In 2009, the 16th century artist Shin Same Dang became the first woman to appear on the banknotes of what country? She was the mother of a leading Confucian scholar. I mean, if it's Confucius, then I would assume China. Yeah, I mean, why yeah, would but, it be? But if it's just a scholar of Confucius, it could be any of the surrounding... The name sounded Chinese, no? Yeah. I've... Come on. China? That no, was South Korea, the Republic of Korea. Selma Lagerlöf, an early Nobel Literature Laureate, has appeared on the banknotes of Sweden. what country? I think Sweden. She was Swedish. Sweden? Yeah. Mm. OK. Yeah. Should we go for that? Yeah. Sweden? That's correct. Ten points for this. I need a two-word term here. In general relativity, what is the name of the path along which light travels in the vacuum? St. Andrew's Chukai. Geodesic. No. I'm afraid you lose five points. The separation between two events in space-time along the path is zero. Royal Holloway Harvey. Line element. No, it's null geodesic. I asked for a two-word term. Ten points for this. From the Latin for pith or marrow, what term indicates the inner region of a tissue or an organ, such as the kidney, adrenal gland or thymus? Royal Holloway Brown. Medulla. Medulla is correct, yes. Your bonuses are on the natural world. In each case, give the word or name from the definition. All three end in the letters O-C-K. Alcea rosea, a distinctive flowering plant that can grow to more than two metres. O-C-K. O-C-K. Yeah, plants and... Hawk, something like... Come on. Puppy or hawk? I know, I don't know. Hawk. Hawk. I don't know. Hawk. It's a hollyhock. Hollyhock. After a mountain in New Hampshire, an isolated hill of bedrock that has resisted the erosion undergone by the surrounding land. Erosion. Yeah, headland. Um, come on, let's have it, please. Would it be bedrock? Rock? Yeah, bedrock. Yeah, go, go. Bedrock. No, it's Monadnock. <laughs> a member of the Cod family, the basis of the traditional foodstuff known by the protected designation Arbroath Smoky. Oh, haddock. 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 Yeah. Haddock. Haddock is correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> A term appearing in Chaucer's Merchant's Tale, what name is given to the traditional study of language development, especially of written languages in their cultural settings? <laughs> the answer to that, of course, is philology, but uh, at the gong, St Andrews have 90 and Royal Holloway have 145. Congratulations to you. We shall look forward to seeing you in the next stage of the competition. I'm afraid, St Andrews, that's it for you. Thank you very much. I hope you can join us next time. But until then, it's goodbye from St Andrews University. Goodbye. goodbye. It's goodbye from Royal Holloway College, London. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>